This is Under Review, the show that talks about Colorado sports with a sprinkling of national sports stories as well. I'm Jordan Long. The University of Colorado Buffalo's football program fired head coach Carl Durrell, who was hired by CU on February 22nd, 2020. Now, the way that Carl Durrell was hired was kind of weird because this was after Mel Tucker left for Michigan State after one year at the University of Colorado in Boulder. Now, Tucker said he wasn't going to leave CU. He repeatedly said, I am not interested in Michigan State. But the thing is, though, Mel Tucker decided to leave CU for his dream job, Michigan State. Now, I don't blame him because Michigan State is a better job than the University of Colorado. The Buffs decided that Durrell, Carl Durrell, was the best name out there to lead the football program. Carl Durrell was a familiar name for the University of Colorado because he had actually coached at the University of Colorado in Boulder. He spent 1995 to 1998 on the staff of Rick Neuheisel as offensive coordinator. Durrell had head coaching experience at the college level with UCLA. His record was not impressive with UCLA. From 2003 to 2007, which is how long he spent at UCLA, they went 43 and 42. Not what I would say is a great record. His only good year was in 2005 when UCLA finished 10 and 2. Otherwise, mostly an under 500 coach. His teams, though, that is UCLA, went to four bowl games. That is four bowl games. And his record was 1 and 3 in those bowl games. At least he had experience and looked like the right guy to turn around the football program for the University of Colorado. The team, that is the University of Colorado, Buffalo's football program, had not won 10-plus games in a season since 2016. Now, Carl Durrell's first season as Buffs head coach was sort of weird. It was a COVID-shortened year, and honestly, the Pac-12, that is the Pac-12 conference, couldn't decide if they were going to play a season in the fall or wait till the spring. They decided to play in the fall and they went four and two and went to the Alamo bowl. So the bus did okay as they went four and two and went to the Alamo bowl. They lost to the university of Texas 55 23. Now I thought the program was headed in the right direction after that year. Well, it didn't get any better last year. They went four and eight and this year, Oh, and five. So you're looking at four and eight and then oh, and five. Yeah, it's time to let him go. Now for the buffs, they may not win a game this year and aren't competitive. If you look at Carl Durrell's program, they look like a badly coached team on both sides of the ball. Offensively, they score 13.4 points per game. The running game though, is where they are having success as they average 113 yards per game on the ground, and the offensive line is creating holes for the running backs to run the ball through. You want that number a tad higher, but you're still getting 100-plus yards per game. That means you are able to run the football. You know, the running game is supposed to open up the passing game, but unfortunately, it hasn't happened. As a team, the Buffs pass for 164 yards per game. And I don't like the average yards per game at 277 yards per game. 277 yards per game is not going to get it done at any level. I don't care if you're playing high school, you know, junior college or college football, or even the NFL. 277 yards on offense is not going to get the job done. You need more production. You need more production by the offense. I can't blame the defense. They are out on the field way too long since the offense hasn't been able to do anything. Defensively, I don't like the points per game as they give up 43.2 points per game. Colorado can't stop anybody from running the football. I get it, though, since the defense has been out far too long. Running the ball has equaled them getting tired, and that's what you want. If you have a great running game on offense, the defense will get tired. The defense, though, is giving up 294.2 rushing yards per game. Way too many. Through the air, the opponents don't have to do much since the ground game is working. 
Of course, they give up 214.6 yards per game through the air, which is still pretty good, but there are missed assignments, which you're going to have, and those are explosive plays for the opponents. Carl Durrell never seemed to get his team ready to play. Even if they were in a game going into the second half, whatever adjustments they made never worked. It is no surprise that Carl Durrell is out. He leaves Boulder, Colorado with an awful eight wins and 15 losses record. A winning percentage of .348. Now, as for Colorado, the interim head coach is Mike Sanford, who was the offensive coordinator. Now, I don't expect him to be the head coach moving forward. This will be the fifth coaching search since 2010 for the University of Colorado, and it's way too many. The coaches that have coached Colorado during that time are John Embry, who lasted from 2011 to 2012. Mike McIntyre, who coached CU from 2013 to 2018. Mel Tucker, who lasted one year, 2019, and now Carl Durrell for the past two seasons until five games this year. That is way too many coaches to go through. Now the question is, who could be the next head coach of the CU Buffs? There are a few names to consider. Eric Bieniemy, Troy Calhoun, Mike, or excuse me, Matt Ernst, Bill O'Brien, and Matt Raul. Eric Bieniemy makes so much sense. He has been the offensive coordinator for Kansas City since 2013. We have seen what Eric Bieniemy can do as offensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs. He has made Patrick Mahomes into a top quarterback in the NFL. Eric Bieniemy, and I love the guy. He's a familiar name for CU. He played college football for the Buffaloes from 1987 to 1991. Of course, he helped them win a national championship in 1990. Eric Bieniemy has also been a coach with the Buffs. His first stint was from 2001 to 2002 as running backs coach. He also came back to the program to be the offensive coordinator under John Embry from 2011 to 2012. I like the name Eric Bieniemy. He knows how to coach. And plus, Boulder is home. He deserves to be a head coach. The problem with Eric Bieniemy, though, is would he want to take a step back and be a college head coach? He wants an NFL head coaching job. I'm not sure. I am not sure why he would want to do that other than to get some experience as a head coach. I know he loves Boulder and Boulder, Colorado, that is, and it's a special place for him. It just seems like he wants to be a head coach of an NFL team. Of course, coming to Colorado would give him a chance to lead a program as head coach, and that's experience you want. Plus, why not turn around the program you played at? I just think it's a long shot for Eric Bieniemy, but hey, it's worth the call. Troy Calhoun is a very interesting name as he coaches the Air Force Falcons in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Calhoun is a local college coach. He has the results at Air Force, and the Falcons are an impressive 115. That is 115 wins and 76 losses under Troy Calhoun, a winning percentage of .602. Air Force has gone to 11 bowl games under him. It would be worth a call to see what interest Troy Calhoun has for the opening at CU. The University of Colorado is a step up from Air Force. What do I mean by that? Well, Air Force is in the Mountain West Conference, not a Power 5 Conference. Colorado is in the Pac-12, which is a Power 5 Conference. He would have a chance to run a big program. For, tri for Calhoun, though, why would you want to leave Air Force for the University of Colorado? Air Force seems like a better job unless you want a different challenge. I don't see Troy Calhoun leaving Air Force for CU. Now, an interesting name, and I don't know why you would want to leave where he is at, is Matt Entz. And he has been the head coach of North Dakota State since 2019. Now, all Entz has done at South Dakota State is win. His overall record is 41 wins and five losses. That is a great, you know, record you want to have. 
Under him, they have won two national titles. North Dakota State is in the football championship subdivision, which is right below CU. Personally, I wouldn't leave North Dakota State for Colorado. North Dakota State is a winning program. Ents has been able to keep North Dakota as a winning program. Just wouldn't make a lot of sense to move on from that. Then again, CU is a big-time school, and it's hard to turn those down. If Ents receives the call, he would really have to think about it. It would allow him to lead a Power 5 school. On the other hand, CU is nowhere near as good as North Dakota State. What I mean by that is, Ents has done a great job recruiting to keep North Dakota State as a powerhouse. I don't see him doing that with CU, so staying at North Dakota State might be best for him. One name that kind of also makes sense, but would he want to take the job, is Bill O'Brien, who is the offensive coordinator of Alabama. Bill O'Brien at least has head coaching experience. I know he's at the University of Alabama, but he was a head coach in college football with Penn State from 2012 to 2013, where he went 5-19. and 19. Then he jumped to the NFL with the Houston Texans from 2014 to 2020, and his overall record in the NFL was 52 wins and 48 losses, and the Texans earned a playoff spot four times. Now he's back in the college game with Alabama. That school is a powerhouse with his offense. Of course it was before, but it still is. I think you want to make the call to him. I think there's interest in becoming a head coach again for Bill O'Brien. He needs he need, he needs to prove he can coach again. The thing is, though, would he take the job in Boulder? Who knows? Now, a name that is a wild card, and I don't know how much interest there is, is Matt Raul. The reason why he's a wild card, he is still the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. So many rumors saying he will be fired, but he has not been fired yet. Even if he's fired, he may take a year off from coaching. Anyway, Matt Raul has coached the college game before. He was the head coach of Temple from 2013 to 2016. Matt Raul became the Baylor Bears head coach from 2017 to 2019. In that time, both schools were actually pretty successful. He has an overall record in the college game of 47 wins and 43 losses. His teams won 10 plus games in a season three times. Matt Rule has coached in four bowl games with a record of one and three. He has not transitioned into the NFL as a head coach. Right now, Matt Rule's record is 11 and 26. Of course, my friend that has been on this program, Jennifer Matthews Lewis, Absolutely wants Matt Rule gone because he's not a very good head coach. Of course, he's still the head coach of the Carolina Panthers, but he must be fired in order for the Colorado Buffaloes to be interested in him. And so far, that hasn't happened. When that happens, well, Matt Rule wants to take a step back and co- and actually go back to the, actually go back to the college game. I would say yes, since he has been successful, it'd be worth the call. Worst thing that Raul can say is no. Now, these are just a few candidates. Who could be the next head coach for the University of Colorado Buffalo's football program? Athletic director Rick George will take his time. Hopefully, the next head coach will turn the football program back into a winner. On to my NFL picks of the week. Last week wasn't a bad week for me as I went three and one. I wanted it to be, you know, four and one. You know, three and two. I should say I went three and two and not three and one. I would have rather been four and one or three and one, but I went three and two. Overall this year, I am 12 and eight. So I'm not terrible, but we will start with the New York football giants versus the Green Bay Packers. The Packers are an eight point favorite. It's another one of those London games. And honestly, I don't like these London games, but that is a story for another day. It's a neutral field. Neither team will have the home field advantage. We know how tough it is to play against the Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. He reads the defenses not only to change the play, but find his open receiver. That's what's so hard about Aaron Rodgers 
If you don't know what play he's going to call and he'll check it off to even a running play or, hey, it'll be a passing play. If you're the Giants, it is key to play coverage on these wideouts. That will make it tough on him to throw the football. That is Aaron Rodgers to throw the football. You have to bring pressure so he doesn't have time to throw the football downfield. On the other hand, though, the key for the, G- for the Giants offense is to convert third downs and control the clock. If you convert and control the clock, well, guess what? Aaron Rodgers isn't on the field to beat you. The Giants have to use the running game of Saquon Barkley to be successful. That offensive line must block to give him lanes to run through. That is going to be key. His runs, that is Barkley's runs, could open up the passing game for the New York football Giants. I do like that it's a neutral site game, even though that's in London. But the fact of the matter is, I don't think it matters because the Green Bay Packers are the better team. They earned the victory in London, England. We're going to move on to the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Arizona Cardinals. The Eagles are a five-point favorite. The thing about the Philadelphia Eagles, they are the only undefeated team left in the NFL. Of course, they will not stay undefeated. The question remains, though, who will knock them off? I don't know if it's going to be this week, but hey, the Cardinals have a chance. The Cardinals are sitting at one and two. The Eagles and the Cardinals offense are very similar in my eyes. What do I mean by that is both quarterbacks run with their legs and can throw it too. Kyler Murray for Arizona and Jalen Hurts for the Eagles. The key for both defenses is keeping these quarterbacks in the pocket. If you let them outside the pocket and not have a spy, they are going to kill you with their legs because they can run the football for large gains. And we saw it this year with both quarterbacks. You cannot let them outside the pocket. You have to spy them with a linebacker. That way, if they start the run, you have the ability to stop it. Murray, though, has weapons he can use in Marquise Brown and Randall Moore at the wide receiver position. One guy I want him to target more is tight end Zach Ertz. Ertz is a great, you know, tight end, but he hasn't had the production because Kyler Murray hasn't thrown his way. So be more productive if you're Zach Ertz. For the Eagles, though, Hertz, that is their quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles, Ertz. Hurts, I should say, must protect the football. He can have the ball knocked out of his hands for fumbles. Also be smart when passing the football. For Arizona, when you drive into the red zone, you have to score touchdowns. If you score a field goal, Jalen Hurts and that offense can go down and score a touchdown. Guess what? That is a difference of four points. Maybe four points if you hit the PAT. Definitely three, but field goals will not cut it in this game if you're the Arizona Cardinals. So in the red zone, score touchdowns. Do not settle for field goals. In the end, though, the Eagles stay undefeated. The Cincinnati Bengals versus the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens are a three-point favorite. The Bengals finally won a game last week against the Miami Dolphins. Can they keep it going? The thing for the Bengals is you have to run the football with Joe Mixon, and they haven't been very successful this year with that. Joe Burrow can toss the football to Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd. Burrow has to be smart with the football and not have turnovers. But this Ravens defense is tough. When the Ravens blitz, you have to take a sack if you're Joe Burrow and don't force it into coverage. For the Ravens offense, we know how good Lamar Jackson is. What needs to happen for the Bengals is to force him to throw the football. If he runs it, that is a mistake. And, of course, those are large gains and maybe even touchdowns, as we saw this year. Bring four or five guys, if you're the Bengals' defense, then have a linebacker as a spy. That way, Lamar Jackson can't run the football. For the Ravens, though, don't change anything on offense. If it's not broken, why fix it? Stick to what you have done, and that is Lamar Jackson throwing the football as well as running it. So that should not change. 
Third downs are going to be a large part of who determines this game in terms of wins and losses. Whoever converts more will win this football game, and who doesn't convert will lose this football game. The team that converts more on third downs should win this football game. In the end, though, I think the Ravens are the better team, and they will come out with a victory. The Dolphins versus the Jets. The Dolphins are a a three-and-a-half-point favorite. Now, the Dolphins have to go with Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback rather than Tua Tagovailoa, who is ruled out for this week because of concussion and other injuries. To be honest, though, nothing will change with the Dolphins' offense. What do I mean by that is Bridgewater can run with the football just like Tua Tagovailoa. Of course, Tua Tagovailoa is a better passer, so you kind of miss it there because Teddy Bridgewater cannot throw the deep pass downfield like to a tag of Aloha. So you do miss that a little bit. For the Jets, though, cover deep on passing plays. Give everything up in the middle. That is what Teddy Bridgewater likes to do is to have those 5 to 10-yard passes. Those may be even shorter, but do not get beat deep. For the Jets' offense, Zach Wilson looked pretty good last week against Pittsburgh. Can he keep his play up? Wilson just needs to read the defense and avoid turnovers. We know turnovers are key to winning any football game. And if you ha- if you are going to take a sack, please do so. If there's a blitz, take a sack. Do not force it into coverage because if you do, then that is a turnover. Of course, you could fumble it, but be careful with the football. This really comes down to the red zone. Field goals again in the NFL will not cut it. You will have to score touchdowns in the red zone. In the end, though, I think the Dolphins are the better team, even with um, Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback. He will get the job done, and that should be just enough as they earn the victory. Now, the Raiders versus the Kansas City Chiefs. I love a division rivalry game. The Chiefs are a seven-point favorite. And the thing about this this game is both the Raiders and the Chiefs don't like each other. For the Raiders, their quarterback is Derek Carr, and he has some weapons to throw to, Devontae Adams and Darren Waller. The truth is they had some success last week against the Denver Broncos, and that has to be there this week, and that's running the football with Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs can find the open hole to run the football through. If the Raiders can do that and keep drives alive, of course that keeps Patrick Mahomes off the field. That is going to be key as they try to control the clock. When it comes to Kansas City, you know what you're going to get with them. Patrick Mahomes can run out of the pocket to not only buy more time, but throw the football. The Raiders need to be mindful of that. Sure, you can blitz, but make sure there is a spy. If not, Patrick Mahomes will make you pay with his legs. For the Raiders' defense, if you have a chance to sack Patrick Mahomes, bring him down. You can't let him have a big play. It really doesn't seem like it'll be a close game, and I have Kansas City winning. My picks again. The New York Football Giants versus the Green Bay Packers. Packers. Philadelphia Eagles versus the Cardinals. Eagles. Bengals versus Ravens. Baltimore Ravens. Dolphins versus Jets. Dolphins. Raiders versus Chiefs, Kansas City. I'm Jordan Long. This has been Under Review. Read my blog that I write Monday through Thursdays with podcasts on Fridays at sports-scoop.com. Of course, please subscribe to our YouTube channel on the for the Sideline Sports Network because we have so many great um, shows and you don't miss any of them if you subscribe. So please subscribe to the YouTube channel for the Sideline Sports Network. We have shows every single day. This has been a Sideline Sports production.